I will go straight to the point that this will be one of those videos that are more of a serious tone, but also of what this channel will lead in the next couple of videos I will try to make. Some people who might have been subscribed for my Helldivers videos, don't worry, it's not about any of that. What I want to get into is Warhammer 40,000 and mainly its recent controversy with Games Workshop, the Redcon, and just recently as I'm making this video like a couple of days ago, like it was being announced that they're rising prices as well and more. You can call this video a rant or more or less because it's something that I've noticed after the controversy and now I understand the people back in 2020 were on about. Specifically, the infamous post of Warhammer is for everyone, unless you don't agree with us. Quite ironic, I would say. With the price increase, this isn't much news to say other than they have been doing this for a while, and this is the first time in a row to do this, and most likely they'll just keep doing this because they can get away with it and there's no push to this, or not enough push to this. So, every year, more and more models do tend to be out of stock, and some models are being removed. Sure, some models might come back in an updated version. Okay, cool. How about leave it down until it actually gets updated, and then replace it? What it seems like is, seems everything is to be less and less models to be charged more and more to the point that I question myself that I'm saying like, Am, am I buying an army or just a figurine from some toy shop that I have to paint? Like, it's annoying, but it doesn't welcome newcomers. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Sure, you might have the excuse of getting into 40k from video games and the lore and all that, but once people want to get into the miniature side of things, well, definitely they won't be able to afford it because GW keeps increasing their prices in excuse of inflation, which that is just a bullshit statement and also why even bother buying GW products when there are better alternatives like 3D printing? Or some physical models you can buy as proxies and play tabletop like that? Or, of course, if you don't know better, you can better off just to not spend money on these miniatures or just Games Workshop products and just go to other hobbies with a better price. That is the price end, really, and um, let's get to the real meat of things. To give some backstory of mine, which is not much and it's straightforward, I got into Warhammer Hobby, like back in 2019, just right after I was looking for some other games or hobbies to do when Overwatch more or less was just like on a decline since there was no updates and content like some real meat content to play for the game, you know, so you can play the game for months. None of that. So, I was learning about Warhammer 40,000 mainly just for the story, you know, the fan animations, the video games and all the good things. I enjoyed it for a while and then boom, the whole controversy of the new and the old fans fighting along with each other and in hindsight, eh, it was a political thing, no doubt. And because fa new fans came to the hobby knowing little of the lore and it seemed that they wanted the new changes to suit their needs and a bit of Games Workshop's ego to shut down fan animations. Like because most like, well, most likely and most definitely they were just jealous. And plus, Warhammer Plus was coming out of coming out like around the corner, and yeah, clearly it wasn't successful. Remember also some of the promised shows that were never brought up ever, and the big money giver of Studies Two. Where is that? They never announced that it was cancelled or any other shows that was mentioned that they have been cancelled. They chose to be silent about it and probably just move on to other things. And I guess lucky for them because some people just forgot about it and just moved on. Which seemed as their motivations wasn't about getting a good product, but to handicap people of their creativity and never work on the IP again. Fuck, I wouldn't even bl like blame them if they even have PTSD from it. It's, it's sad to see that, which is a shame as well. Back then, you know, when that whole thing was happening, I chose to be ignorant because, I'll be honest, like I didn't want to get into controversy because I clearly didn't know better as I just started to get into the hobby and knowing things around and I just wanted to know better of the lore and all that and so and then I just ignored the the <laughs> quotation marks bad negative drama queen videos ah oh, you know you know like if I see any of those videos any negative stuff that I was getting like really invested into I'm just gonna have an aneurysm if I hate to watch it <laughs> What? Criticizing? You know, I don't know better, but criticism is cringe. Ugh. What are you on about? And then Warhammer made a statement of Warhammer's for everyone thing. 
like stay opposed. And for some reason, out of confusion back then, was that Arch had to remove the name Warhammer or anything like that. Okay. For legal reasons. Like, back then I was like, oh, okay. I, I guess that's not a thing. But then now I noticed, like, what? You, you're just removing his name Warhammer because they had the word Warhammer. Like, it's being repeated more than once. Like, Warhammer is literally ripped off on other, like, you know, fandoms. Well, sci-fi. Not sci-fi. Just any other fantasy stuff. Like, fuck. Dune. Copy-paste. Dune. And then they have the fucking, like, the audacity to be like, no, 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 no. You're not allowed to copy us, but we are allowed to copy others because... Uh, I don't know. But then again, the company is British, so I guess they have a habit of stealing other shit. And then the next four or five years, I was doing my own thing, getting models when I can afford it and make my army slowly. Well, no, very slowly. And there were some questionable things that happened, but it wasn't much back then. You know, it was just reading books, painting models, and play tabletop when I can. Then, two weeks ago, more or less, the whole situation of the female custodies part had a massive retcon which led fans confused and they were asked by fans since, you know, when there were female custodies and why, just out of the blue. And then GW brought this infamous statement that there have always been female custodians since the 10,000 were created. Of course, there's an outrage, and Warhammer doing their way of coping is to block people. You see, if you block people, then you don't have a problem. So no controversy, right? Obviously, this statement was a lie, especially when the codexes of the previous custodian codexes, like in most of the heresy stories, they were depicted and mentioned as men. Which... This was well-established law for the over 30 years and is being reinstated over and over that this is the case and instead to work around it or, you know, some new development of story, you know, have some reasonable retcon changes or new changes that makes the story of the universe make sense. Instead, they didn't and they didn't care. They wanted to crawl into the lore and give the middle finger to gaslight their fans because they can do whatever and they know they will get this backlash and they went with it. You can make the argument that, oh, I just hate women. It's just a straw man argument because if fans hated women, even in before like Warhammer got popular, like even in before seventh edition, more or less, or when they when the first models came out, when they were being like mentioned, then we wouldn't have female-only factions of Sisters of Battle, Sisters of Silence, or having extra female, like, Imperial Guard, and so much more, but in reality, we didn't. Because they were cool, and it had a nice bedrock lore and stories that was put out, and later on, they were just part of the established lore. Because they were cool. Instead of making new models to expand the female-only factions, which a lot of fans appreciate and loved, like, these factions, but no, they wanted everything to be female because they can. Nothing else. That's it. You know, as simple as I can make it, make it so. As a wise man said, and definitely I'm not copying him for whatsoever, you cannot reason with unreasonable people. Here's a, here's a quick little, little, little trivia. Can you argue against the wall? If not, try it out. It is fantastic. I've tried it myself, and so far, um, the the wall has has beaten me to death. Like I, I just cannot defeat it. It's it's a wall, and if you get my meaning, that's what I mean. You cannot argue a wall, and that wall is an unre unreasonable person. That's all I'm gonna say. Another argument would be is 40k is always being fluid and or always has changes, so it's not a big deal. So it's like real life since. You know, it always changes. Things always, like, adapt and go to other things. True. Some of the stories that can be the case, but some of them are not. And they are established multiple times of what they are. Retcons can be a thing for some IPs when there's a good reason. And this retcon is not. Think about it. What is the retcon in the Custodes right now? There's women now. Why? Because they always existed? But what the fuck? No, that's not true. There have always been men from showing XYZ evidence. Well, you just don't understand the lore. And then 
There'll be insults and other mental gymnastics of why it's a thing or why this new retcon is not a problem at all. If the retcon of female custodians wasn't a problem at all and not giving a shit then, one, why did you even bother giving your opinion in the first place if you don't care? And second, okay then, what was the problem in the first place to necessarily change custodians? There is no reason, because, say with me kids, because they can and here's the middle finger. That's what they do. Here's another reason that most likely people might not be getting into the hobby. Well, it's expansive as hell when it comes to lore and it feels intimidating for the newcomers. But if you go in and read the lore and then suddenly they change it out of the blue even though it was well established then, you know, wh what's the point? Oh, Horus didn't kill the Emperor? Oh yeah, who is it this week? A female B54 fun pronouns reptile in the wheelchair killing the Emperor by running over him? Like, come on now, it's dumb. If everything needs to be changed because lol lamal they can because you know, some person who's like a genius, they could just change everything out of the blue because he just figured it out with no, you know, no like build up or anything. It's just, it's just nonsense. That's canon for a reason. To be honest, for a while, I believe there was no such thing as canon or retcon because most of the stories you take are from unreliable narrators and taking the perspective of people. And if you think of perspective people like, ah, oh, you know, they see something and they believe it to be true and sometimes they might over exaggerate things, you know? And then someone else just sees like, oh, you know, 10,000 soldiers ran in and they just fucking died. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other one was like, oh, they marked here to death. Oh, it was a, such a glorious battle, you know, shit like that. But, but that's for stories that they're a bit vague and you know that they're taken in these perspectives. But that is not the case anymore. I've changed my opinion on this when it's just an excuse to change everything and then you have to do like mental gymnastics of why it's there within like it's silly it's dumb the only thing I will say is if things are not canon or retcon is when things are vague and fluid to use your imagination to do things but not when things are clearly established that this and that is the way they do it, especially for a long time. Yes, there's also the story of, you know, whose Games Workshop holders are, and while they're working with Amazon, there's XYZ reasons to it. I'm not gonna go too far the idea of everything is woke, and woke did all this and that. Yes. I'm aware to a certain extent that they had to play on this. Let's not pretend and beat around the bush like they had no involvement whatsoever. But the general eyes of the people where they didn't know much about politics or just don't know much in general, it's more about like Games Workshop gaslighting the fans because they can, plus Games Workshop increasing the prices does give a bit of a sour taste for newcomers and probably current fans to get into the tabletop hobby. I wouldn't be surprised for people to just not buying minis entirely or just leaving the hobby and look for other alternatives. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't blame you. When it comes to 40k and making the excuse of I don't want politics in my hobby and trying to avoid real life stuff so I can have my escapism in 40k. Which it is an understandable argument, but when it comes to politics deliberately coming into the hobby, and there's good examples that are from the recent books and somewhat dwarf magazines. They are deliberately injecting politics into your fictional universe that has no reason to be there in the first place. Like, let's be reasonable and calm for this moment. You know, let, you know, let's take a seat and let's be reasonable and calm. If you didn't want politics in your hobby, then why was it not pushed back when there were clearly hot politics in the hobby? Pure blindness, perhaps, or didn't notice, or just chose to be ignorant, like it's some phase people have, thinking, you know, oh, these guys are just some drama queen, so might as well just ignore them. Or, you know, are they afraid they would get pitchforked to speak out of their minds? Or there were just not as many people to speak out, so the majority was one-sided, and if anyone disagreed with them, they got fucking crushed beneath their boots. I'm being rhetorical with my questions, so that's more for you to decide that. In the reality of things, as much as I'm a bit late to the party to notice, but it's clearly Games Workshop I'm going in the direction and most old fans or fans who enjoy the lore that has been established for well for over 30 years, they're going in a direction where other established IPs go. 
where they had such well, good, you know, really good start, and then it goes downhill afterwards. Partly you can say it's because, you know, it's going mainstream and there's new people who don't understand that much about the lore and all that, XYZ. But, you know, just to generalize it, and we know who it is, but mainly it's people who get into the hobby and deliberately change the things in their own needs, which you won't like, and either you will tolerate it until, you know, you can't have it anymore, you can't take it anymore, it's just, you know, just bizarre, or you're just gonna leave it outright. In conclusion of this, to round up everything, Games Workshop in a for a long while now, it will most likely just have fans just abandon it and go for alternatives. The creativity and the passion of the grimdark future of the 41st millennium was long gone ever since Primaris were introduced and Gilliman returning. Personally, I don't have an issue with Primaris design and Gilliman returning, but the way they brought them in out of the blue with no cause and effect in the universe, you know, it's very grating, and I understand now where people come from. I just wish I just knew better back then. Well, what will I do now as an individual? Like, for me personally, what, what can I actually do? Well, trying to catch up 40k lore, there was no point since they changed it to retcon everything out of the blue, so... You know, they're gonna be doing this in the future as well, so it's a no-no. Like, why even bother? I will still make Helldivers 2 videos, mainly, you know, just theories to mess around and all that, because it's pretty fun videos when I just, like, have some random idea and then just, you know, just go ham with it. It's funny. It, it's fun, it's fun. If I find some interesting old 40k lore, I might bring it up, and there is a website that is called Unofficial 40k Fan Stories, so I might get into that, and we'll see what happens on that case. And then, there was another one where I've recently been trying to get into um, another alternative, like, lore uh, hobby, or just tabletop hobby in general, called the uh, Grim Dark Future from One Page Rules. You know, it's pretty much an alternative tabletop game to 40k, but I'm probably going to be making a video soon, and mainly to criticize their um, their world book, more or less. I've got the actual name, but it's, it's expanding, like, the lore with the other universes and that. So... I'm gonna be seeing this book, read it and all that, and then I'm gonna criticize it and, you know, what I think at least they can do better. 3D printing is a good option to do, but fuck me, man. Uh, I just don't have the ventilation, like, in my room or the space to do so. So, you know, because I was actually gonna do, like, resin stuff, but, um, but when I do, I'll deliberately, like, get started and learn 3D printing. Like, uh, from what I've noticed, it's not that hard. You know, you just have to take some precautions, you know, take it subtly, don't be fucking stupid, no shortcuts, and, you know, it should be fine. But, um, for the meantime, well, shit. <laughs> no more 3D printing for now. So, ah, it's, it's unlucky. So, I'll end this video now, and I'll bring some famous quotes that was in, like, in the Lord lore. An open mind. Is like a fortress with gates unbarred and unguarded. The rewards of tolerance are treachery and betrayal.